G'day everybody, it's Dave from Wing Chun Mind Force. Welcome to another bus talk. I'm talking today about 10 Essentials of Chu Shong Tin Wing Chun, which is a question asked me by my friend and student Chris Wright. He lives in Yorkshire in England. He put it to me just recently, what would you say the 10 Essentials are? And he's that sort of guy, he comes up with interesting questions. So I just sat down and wrote down what I thought, felt was the, the 10 essentials, and I think it's a useful list. These are things that I have talked about before, but I think you'll appreciate them being put into a, a short 10-point um, list. I must admit, over the last few months, I've, I've made lots of videos about practical Wing Chun, I'm trying to address some of the stuff about fighting and whatever, but I find that my comments drop off when I'm doing something directly about fighting and jump up again when I'm talking about the internal aspects and I realise that's what you guys really enjoy and I guess that's that's always been my main theme. So I'm going to stick to that. Um, I'll still do some practical things at times, but I realise I'm, I'm never going to be Master Wong. I'm bald like him. Not quite as handsome, um, but he, you know, those those guys have their niche and they do well with it. But my thing is a ph philosophical bent. That's what I, I love about Wing Chun is the deeper aspects of it that myself and many, many others, and you're all part of that, are trying to achieve something that's almost superhuman. And that's what's cool about it. So anybody can thump, anybody can kick. Um, but not everybody can do what we do. So my 10 essentials start with number one, Yi Sik. And that's, I've made videos about that. If you want to go back through my um, my videos list about what Yi Sik is, but it, it means intention method. It's a Cantonese terms. And it's the terms that were used by Master Chu Shong Tin to describe his approach to Wing Chun and it's even said that he considered calling the art Yi Sik, or might have been the first form calling it Yi Sik. But he stuck with um, Sil Nim Dao, which is the traditional, and Sil Nim Dao is pretty much the same thing, but Yi is the key, this concept of Yi. Um, Yi, according to Sifu Mark Ho, who was very close to Si Gong, Yi is the compiler between the machine language and the and the GUI, the GUI. So the machine language is our subconscious, our superconscious, our unconscious mind that controls this vast natural power that we have, but as humans we've lost to a fair extent because we're so conscious. So Yi sits between that mind of nature that super powerful mind that we're trying to tap into and release and make part of us when we fight or whatever we're doing and the conscious mind um, and also the visual mind which is you could call it the imagination but it's it's a complex of brain parts in the rear there so that's this, this yi method is super important to understand that we're not using the conscious mind obviously we have to use it as we're moving into this and learning, but what we're trying to achieve is to be in that other mind, that super conscious, subconscious, unconscious mind, and use that so that I don't hit its hits all by itself. And everything in Wing Chun could potentially become so the subconscious does it all. That's the that's the task, and that's what pe people keep interested in for 50, 60 plus years in this art because it's it's a magnificent human endeavor. The second thing I talk about or put on my list is the location in the rear brain or outside in the universe, the thousand yard stare and the peripheral vision. So that's a few things, but the first thing that really helped me was taking my conscious me, the ego, and sitting it down in the rear of the brain where the the brain of that subconscious is located in the rear complex and also in the body through the spinal cord through your nerves that brain is actually very real 
but it usually works autonomously, so we're not aware of what's going on. So just consciously loc locate yourself back there. And yoga has a similar practice in that you locate yourself in your breath. And there's a few practices I learned in yoga where you, you locate yourself in the back of your throat and also in your, your abdomen. And then you imagine prana, chi, flowing in and flowing out, flowing in good chi, flowing out um, negatives. But that's a type of self-hypnosis practice and that's what you know I believe we do in Wing Chun. That you just locate yourself back there and keep the, the conscious mind engaged back there so that the, the subconscious, the superconscious can come out and do its job by moving your body. It's also a very powerful thing if you can sort of feel that you actually go out into the universe. If you, you can locate yourself in the surrounds. I think this is a higher level thought, but it's something that I've, I've felt sometimes. And I know practitioners who get great benefit from this idea to, to really sort of leave your body. The thousand yard stare is a thing that soldiers get after action people who have been really traumatized people who have been isolated for a long time say in the antarctic they, they get a thousand yard stare thing where they don't consciously engage with others very easily they always staring off and that's that's the feeling you get when you engage that rear brain it takes you back there and i've said you know in fighting one of the first things I learned from Bruce Lee, watching him in the movies and reading his books and in mag interviews and magazines, he talked about um, not looking at the opponent, but looking at the ground just in front of you, taking in the opponent with the peripheral vision. And with that peripheral vision, it is like an instinctive thing. Like, you're, I'm looking at something in here, if it, suddenly something flew at me, a bird or something's going to hit me in the face my subconscious mind would go whop and try to stop it or try to protect me or, you know, I'd blink because the peripheral vision is linked to your subconscious mind. And I was just talking to my friend and student, Mark, last night when we were training um, about Miyamoto Masashi. And most of you martial arts tragics out there would well and truly know him. He wrote the book of five rings go rin no show and he was a two-handed swordsman the greatest swordsman ever in japan and in his book he one of the things he advises is practice like cultivate your peripheral vision so i do it by taking off my glasses and then you stare at something ahead of you and you feel well, that's the right word. You, you feel with your vision. I can see my fingers right out there, even though it's like 90 degrees. I can still feel it with my mind. I can sort of see it, but it feels like I'm touching it. That's what I'm looking at, but I'm just there. And that going into that state does put you more in the right mind state. So that's a trick for you. Also looking at the ground, if you watch Bruce's movies, when, when he's surrounded, he sort of looks down. Part of the idea is that the ground's usually blank. So if you're looking at people, you're thinking, oh God, that guy's got a knife. Oh God, that guy's big. That person looks like he could beat me. You know, you start worrying about stuff. But when you look at the ground, same as when you're using your imagination, often you look up to the ceiling or up to the sky, it's sort of a blank spot and you switch to the visual brain. It's an interesting phenomenon that's scientifically proven. So the third thing is a Silnimdal meditation standing. So the first thing of importance in Silnimdal practice is not to move. Most of us just think, well, we're just standing there and then we get into the real form. But that first standing is extremely important. And if you can do it, just stand and I don't even stand in the stance or you know with the feet apart all the time I often just stand with my feet together which is the very first thing you do before you measure out your stance as we used to say and just stand and feel your body mind map your body so move all around your body 
sort of inquiring of your body, where are you in space? Every, every surface of you, and then you can go inside and think about your internal organs and think about your muscles. Whatever you're capable of doing, you can sort of really mind map the whole thing, feeling it in space, and it helps to have your eyes closed to do it often. It's good to get, aw get away from distractions. Another thing that I do and I advise is to put on some very non-conscious music like ambient music or Tai Chi music they often call it or you know I love Indian traditional music flute and tabla it just goes on and on and on and it puts you into almost like a trance so that's that's extraordinarily powerful and useful and that's really the start of Sunim Dao that mind mapping is ye that's that's what Sigong said you know that's what he taught Mark Ho from Sheffield, from Sung Wing Chun, he said, it's a type of mind mapping. You want to map your body and your, your, your mind. I don't know whether it's just the conscious mind or the subconscious does it, but you map your body and you keep that feeling of that map. The next thing is Sun Im Dao meditation, external movement. So that's what we all know. You go through the moves of the form and you're making it happen. You're doing it as effortlessly, as gently, as softly, relaxed just letting it happen and you do that for quite a time and that trains the movements the correct sort of ideas the correct movements the feelings of the form and these are right through the other forms so it's a preparation for doing chum q bill g the dummy the knives the pole you don't get anywhere with your Wing Chun unless you do that. So I'm not saying you completely don't use your conscious mind. Obviously, you've got to learn things and the conscious mind's how you learn them at first. And then you move into the this higher stuff. Number five, Sinem Dao Meditation, internal movement. Now, this is, I've talked about in my videos, secret hidden in plain sight. And as I've said there, it's not really a secret in that People haven't purposely hidden this stuff, but I think it's considered well. If you get to the point where you actually can feel this stuff and you get it, then we'll talk to you. It is a bit of a personal journey, and for many people it's just impossible or sounds like a lot of woo-woo or bullshit. You know, the people who don't believe in internal martial arts would say, oh, yeah, you know, you're just kidding yourself. It's very real. But it's it's when, you know, it's literally, I don't hit, it hits all by itself. It's this, it's when you're super conscious, your subconscious, your unconscious mind, your yi starts to move you by itself. You've got, so you've got to wait for it until you feel it. And you feel something very definite. And I've given you some ideas. I'll, I'll talk about it more. I'm still obviously trying to work out what it's about myself, trying to get better at it, you know, making progress, but it's definitely a much higher level than just doing the form effortlessly. It's when, and it's what, you know, Master Yip Man was said to practice Silnim Dao. He'd put a wet rice paper on his shoulder and it would be dry by the time he finished the form. And that's not about gruelingly making yourself go really super, super slow. No, it's just standing there and waiting for it to do the form. And Sigung, Nima talked about Sigung standing up on the rooftop in the dark with a tan sound, just waiting for the tan sound to move. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it moves all by itself. And Horace Chu talks about it. In his essay in Sigong's first book of Wing Chun, Horace talks about a doll made of wool and, you know, he, he realised after quite a bit of time that the wool was starting to move by itself and um, rather than, like, the first external movements where you sort of bend the doll's arms and make it do the movements, in internal, Sil Nim Dao is when the wool inside starts to move, you're not doing it. Freaky, isn't it? <laughs> it's very real, though. Number six, floating torso, no legs, feet on stream bed. So what I'm really big on, and I've got this from other people, it's I take things and run. You know, that's my gift, I think, is that 
somebody gives me a cool idea, I write it down, I obsess about it, I run with it, I, I think laterally about it, I come up with different ways to explore it. So floating torso, no legs, right? You have no legs, you don't want to stand. You're just floating. That floating feeling in your pelvis, I believe, is Tai Gong when you, you're sealed. The energy's not leaking out and you're connected top to bottom. And your spine naturally starts to expand if you're in the right mind state and you're just floating there and effortlessly. And this is what powers Chum Q and obviously Bill G is another level where you're twisting, but it's sort of this floating torso. It's it's an essential thing. And, and Bo Bazaar, Sifu Bo, taught me a lot of cool stuff, but he he told me that Sigong said to him that he Sigong felt like he was floating, like a floating ball on top of water, like on a, a creek. And his legs were just sort of like dangly things, not really doing anything. And they were just sort of like tippy tapping along the rocks, which I think is a magic, a magic way to think of it. As you want to have your legs that empty that they just feel like they're just hanging there and tippy tapping along. You don't want to be squatting down and tensing your muscles and all that that's just exactly the opposite of what you want to do you want to just be floating there and your legs just empty and it's just, i find it's, a, it's an idea that really really helps empty your legs number seven always conscious feeling the torso and always move from the torso so this is take this is a chum cue thing but it's taking um what I've just talked about with Sinem Dao, taking that and moving. So you've got to train yourself constantly, 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 and I'm constantly telling it to my students. They're probably sick of me here saying it, but I say, no, from your body, in your body. I want to see in your body, feel your body. No, move, be in your body. Always, always in your body. So it's, I used to try and work out mechanically how that worked. It doesn't really matter how it works. Just consciously be in your also be in your spine be in your center wherever just feel the whole thing and whatever you're doing in Wing Chun however you're moving you've got to always be sick you've got to always feel that torso it's simple but it's not easy you, you just as soon as you start to do something out here your conscious mind runs out of your torso into your hand or wherever no back back here 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 I won't let them do chum cue I stop them I feel, oh yeah, it comes from the torso now, good. If they're not, no, stop, that's just your arm. Back in your torso. And I do that to myself all the time. In the torso, Dave, if I'm doing it, no, that's wrong. Go back. Oh yeah, I'm in the torso, I'm floating. Okay, just move that. Number eight, always no force, empty, light and soft. And I've never talked to a single master who doesn't totally agree with that. It, it always comes down to no force, Use no force, absolutely no force, light, soft, gentle, effortless. <laughs> it's so great. I love effortlessness. I love flowing. This is why putting music on is really good because it gets you into a sort of a, just a floating, flowing. You're not having a fight in a pub. It's not scary. You're just dancing. But your Wing Chun, whatever you're doing, you know, You've got that mind map. Always be looking out for tension. Oh, that's tension. Well, that's wrong. Let's um, start again. Let's slow down. Maybe that's beyond me. Maybe go back to something that you can do. Um, I've been just turned 25 years. I've been practicing uh, in the Chushong Tin lineage. And there's still lots of things that I think I'm full of crap at. So don't feel bad about it. It's This is not an easy art. <laughs> this is... This is challenging, especially if you haven't got an amazing master to learn from and you've got a whole lot of people to constantly practice with and you're all up at the crack of dawn eating your bowl of rice and going for a run and being a full-on Shaolin, you know, just being an ordinary dude trying to learn this, it's a challenge. So just remember that. If it's not empty and light and soft and no force, it's not Wing Chun. It's something else. It's some kind of kickboxing or... It's external Wing Chun, or it's, you know, whatever you want to call it, Dragon Fu. 
nine year end points. So this is where it seems to contradict what I was saying about always being back here. But this is really Bill G when you can be in here, which is what Silnim Dao and Chum Q is training us, tr literally training us to always be consciously in here or you know, subconsciously in here, but just feeling in your torso all the time. Then you can put your mind whilst doing that. It's like juggling a couple of balls at once, putting your mind into points effortlessly and just moving those points you know the palms of your hand your elbow um, that's one thing I got from Bo a lot was just going back to the idea of consciously remembering my elbow I'd I'd been sort of getting into just the hand which is it's valid but maybe I was getting a little ahead of myself sometimes sometimes I could do it sometimes I couldn't but once I he said, just don't forget your elbow. I felt the whole sow, the whole forearm and arm come alive. And that's ye in points, you know, it could be points in your shin. It can even be a line, you know, like, you know, I'm saying points, it could be a line. You know, it could be your whole shin or the side of your arm or the whole body or, you know, point of your forehead. It's a very creative art. And if you look carefully at the forms, you'll find all sorts of stuff you never thought about. Like, think about that step back we do in Chum Q. What's that about? Is it just stepping back? Maybe it's an attack, you know, when somebody's behind you and you just go, boom, knock them flying. You know, or somebody's about to hit you and his mate's grabbed you behind and you just, you relax and you just go, boom. The other guy gets thrown, he sort of lets go, you turn, smack into him. It's all, the forms are genius, like, this is true Shaolin is you know whether it was made up by just one lady Nung Mei whether it's a compounded tradition from all sorts of arts but a hell of a lot of geniuses came up with this art so we've got to stick to it and preserve this art and Sigong Chu Shang Tin taught us the real thing there's no doubt about that I don't care less what other people say I really don't care they're welcome to their beliefs but I know for sure that Master Yip Man really knew the art and Chu Shong Tin taught us the real thing, and we're bloody lucky. It's a great treasure. The last thing is no thought. Don't think, feel. This is what Bruce Lee says in Enter the Dragon. And I really am a great admirer of Bruce, and you probably know that. And I believe it's, it's sort of legendary that he put that in to his great masterwork, and maybe he had a premonition that he was going to die, because he died just after that movie was finished. But he gives, he says to that kid, don't think, feel. And, you know, I first saw that in 1975, probably. And so many years later, it sort of clicked. I went, bloody hell. And, you know, when Albert Chong and, and Peter Wong were talking to me and um, they said, basically, Sil Nim Dao means Sil, don't think. Nim Dao means a feeling, feel. Right? A mind map that's what feel is it's a mind map feel your whole body mentally feel it in in space that's why you can touch your nose I got my eyes closed where's my nose oh there it is how do I know that I'm not using vision it's feeling it's a mind map right find my cheeks find my ears it's it's really a mind map so that's it there you go 25 minutes bus talk I really hope you got something from that. I'm going to post the um, the list in the, the um, whatever it is, whatever you call it below, <laughs> the wordy bit. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Continue to keep watching. Tell your friends about me. Encourage me. I've got a couple of other YouTube channels going, but I swear I will not let this one go. I've never made a single bean out of this channel, but I do it out of love. Love of you guys, love of Wing Chun. I just want to pass on what I can of the true art to those with ears to hear. And whatever whatever uh, comes of it, comes of it. I'm sure you guys are all doing magical things out there. I'll leave it at that. Have a fantastic rest of your week and see you next time.